Maranatha, my PBC family and friends. Pastor Brian here with another quick bite, living the word. Uh, today I actually have an eye doctor appointment. It's my this morning I've been thinking a lot about vision and uh, just kind of how vision works and stuff like this. And and I was thinking about some passages in the Bible that kind of speak about vision. And uh, and then I was thinking about what the Lord actually has to say sometimes about vision. And in particular, when I thought about that, I thought about the prophets. And not just the prophets of old, but if you'll allow me, the prophets of today. Prophets are those who just herald the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, <clears throat> we always kind of think prophets mean something they had to foretell. Well, here's the deal. If I'm sharing with you what's going to happen in the future according to the word of God, then I'm a foreteller. Therefore, I'm a prophet. Now, I'm not going to get into all the arguments and details of all those things, guys. But here's the point. And, and don't get me wrong. Don't sit, go out there and say, Brian says he's a prophet. That's not what I'm talking about here. But what I really want you to understand is this is I really want you to understand how the Lord looked at these things. In particular, in the time and season in which we live, I hear so many Christians, I run into so many Christians now who are uh, all up in arms and upset about the way and the state of the world, uh, uh, in particular America, our nation, and just the things they perceive even within the church, where they're actually starting to get to a place where they're starting to judge their brothers and sisters in Christ harshly. And uh, and so I just wanted to kind of share something here with us this morning as way of uh, hopefully encouragement, but also an idea about how we're we're supposed to really see things. So it comes from Jeremiah chapter 29. And uh, I'm going to be picking up at verse 8 right now. Now, in the, during the time of Jeremiah, there were a lot of prophets. And there were a lot of people going about saying, Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord. And they were talking about all these things that were going to happen and come to pass and so on and so forth. And looking at, at the world and, 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 and uh, geopolitical climate, if I can put it to you that way, for lack of better terms. And uh, they were get, going, oh, this is what's going to happen, this is what's going to happen, this is what's going to happen. And so and uh, the children of Israel were caused distress over these things. Uh, they were upset. They were scattered abroad. Uh, we can read back in chapter 23 that they were scattered abroad because of these things. But anyway, what I really want to get into is this. In verse 8, the Lord says these words. He says, For thus saith the Lord the ho of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in your midst of you deceive you, neither hearken you to their dreams which ye have caused, or to your dreams which, which ye have caused to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Now I'm going to pause here for one second. So what is God talking about here? He's literally telling us, here's the deal. There will be those prophets amongst you who honestly I haven't sent. And how are you going to recognize them? Well, listen to their diviners and what they're going to do, right? He, they're basically going to kind of cause this upheaval, this turmoil. And how do we know that? Because of what he says after this. And it's a far too famous verse. We quote oftentimes, you'll see people even have this in uh, posters and, and uh, on uh, verses written in their home and things of this nature. But what is the verse that we're talking about and what brings this verse to light? These false prophets, these who would be false, uh, who would be prophesying falsely in his name, saying, here's what's going to happen. God has shown me this. God already built this to me. Uh, let me give you an example before I go on to the next verse. Uh, you know, I hear about those people who are all in these prophecy updates. What's going on in the world? How is this working with the end times? How close are we getting? Now, don't get me wrong, guys. I'm excited, just as excited about anybody else about the return of Jesus Christ. But I know that when my Lord and Savior returns, I want to be found doing what he called me to do. Not just seeing and being tell people, oh, here's what's happening in the future. I want to be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is what he left me here to do. This is what he wants me to do, to bring people into the fold. So I want to be found pleasing in his sight when he shows up. I want to be found doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But then he says these words, though, after he warns about these false prophets who will come and they, that he hasn't sent. And the diviners, those who are able to divine the times to figure out what's going on. This is what he gives us a warning about with those, or actually encouragement about those, if we just ignore those and focus on him. He says this in verse 10. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years are accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. So he literally says, now this is, of course, in the Old Testament. He's giving the children of Israel, this is how long you're going to deal with Babylon. Well, for us, he said, I will return. Watch and be ready. That's what he told us to be, right? He told us, in the meantime, I got a job for you. Get out there, share the gospel. And then he says these words. Then, verse 12, or, or, and, and then verse 11, he says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. 
So what's he really talking about here? What's he really saying? What's he driving home here? Here's the point. He's saying, listen, instead of getting so worried about what all those so-called prophets and diviners are telling you, here's what I need you to do. I need you to recognize that I have an expected end for you. In other words, if I put it to you, hope in me because I have an expected end for you. I have a goal for you. And if you, I know the thoughts that I have towards you, are thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And here's the deal. What are we supposed to do then? Well, because you know we have an expected end, because we have hope, call upon the Lord and seek the Lord. And that's what he goes on to say. So my encouragement for us today is very simple. Not saying we can't pay attention to what's going on around us, guys, and we have to act like ostriches with our head in the ground. What we need to do, though, is to not get upset and run around like a chicken with our head cut off because of what we see coming down the pike. Instead, to stay steady, stay the course, keep our eyes upon the Lord, call upon him and seek him while he may be found. So I hope this encourages you today. And just remember, as always, that I love you, we love you, God loves you, and God's got this.